take roll to make sure we get everybody. I don't see Todd yet. Oh, yes, I see him. Hi, Todd's Todd. Here. Okay. Hey. And did I see Deborah? Is she here? Here. Yeah. Where is she? Oh, there you are. Sorry. Um, and Christy, I saw, and May, I saw. Lorene is um, going to be late. She's dealing with her little dog. Um, Nancy, I thought I saw you. Nancy Turner. Yeah, she's here. Yeah. Okay. Um, Margaret's here. Nancy Eichstadt's here. Natalie's here. Libby is not here. Is that right? I don't see her. So we're missing Libby Spencer. Beverly's here, Lanny's here, and Leslie's here. And Jim is here, Liz and Amber, Allegra, Elizabeth, Catherine, Laura. Did I miss anyone? I hope I didn't miss anyone. Mitzi. Welcome everybody. Is there anyone that wasn't affected by the storm that we had that was not? Oh, wow. So you were so lucky. Yes. Yeah. yeah you guys got hit hard. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm glad that everyone is safe. Nobody got hurt physically, right? Right. That's great. Um, so we have um, an interesting meeting tonight. It's going to be kind of uh, fun. It's going to be different because we have um, different people. Um, so we're going to go through several things. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, budget. We're going to talk about the next design phase. I think Jim's going to talk about that. Um, Catherine is going to talk a little bit about where we're going, where we're headed. Um, and we're still on track as far as I understand it. Um, we don't have any minutes to approve, so we can go ahead and just get right started. Catherine, you wanna go ahead? Sure, sure. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. It's so, I was telling a few earlier, it feels like deja vu. We haven't seen each other in a while, and it felt like, oh my gosh, it must be a task force day. This is how it feels. Kind of forgot. <laughs> um, we um, have some new faces. That's the main thing. Uh, the first thing I want to do is make is let you know that um, uh, we have a new project manager. You know, you got the email that Jennifer left, and we're very sad about that, and we miss her already. But uh, Liz is fantastic. We've been working together for a couple months now. And Jim, why don't you? I yeah. Don't know, well, I mean, <laughs> what you just said uh, kind of sums it up pretty well. I mean, Liz is uh, one of the people who's been with Opsis for many years, and very uh, talented architect and uh, as well as a uh, project manager. Uh, she's a delightful person to work with as you're all gonna find out and has a great sense of humor. Um, so she's, uh, we think a great fit for this project. Um, and she also brings uh, experience working with the North Clackamas uh, School District. So very familiar with permitting in the area and the regulatory review. And um, yeah, we just, you know, we're, we all miss Jennifer and uh, wish her the best. Uh, she, you know, you got a note from her and she's uh, taking a sabbatical. And, um, but I think we're in, in great hands here with, with Liz. So um, maybe you wanna say a few words, Liz? Sure, it's nice to meet you all virtually. Um, hopefully by the end of this, we'll get to meet in person. I feel like that's a good goal. Um, <clears throat> So I'm really excited about getting to work with you all and starting this journey over the next year or so. Um, like Jim mentioned, I've been at Opsis for almost eight years now, uh, but by way of Chicago. So I started out my career there, but it's been mostly in civic and educational design. Um, and uh, I've worn a lot of different hats at Opsis, both on the design side and the management side. But I spent the last four years, like Jim mentioned, working with the bond work in North Clackamas School District. So 
you all are probably familiar with some of the projects I've just worked on because they're all right around in the area. So Whitcomb Elementary and uh, Milwaukee El Puente Elementary and then New Urban High School in Oak Grove, which is uh, wrapping up construction in the fall. So I've had opportunity to work with the community in Clackamas and uh, the jurisdiction and have a little experience. Um, and then I was trying to think of something non-architecture related. Uh, Jim, uh, well, I serve on the board of a small theater company out in Hillsboro, uh, Bag and Baggage. Jim and I worked on their uh, Black Box Theater about five years ago, and I've been on the board since then. Um, so if anybody ever wants to talk about the complexities of trying to keep a tiny theater company afloat during COVID, I would <laughs> love to chat with you about that. Um, but long story short, I'm, I'm really excited to join the team and to get to know all of you and uh, yeah, get started. That's great, thanks. Um, so Liz really hit the ground running uh, because we've, had, we've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes. Um, and you know how things never stay the same. Uh, over a project like this, we're gonna see new faces. And I have a little bit of news about myself. Um, I've decided to retire um, in April. And um, so, so uh, we're going to make a smooth transition. I'm also going to uh, be, you'll still be seeing me in, let's see, May and April and May. I'm going to work part-time in those months. So we'll get a smooth transition to a new project manager from the staff side. We have the position open already, and we're looking to look at the first applicants um, March 8th. <clears throat> and then in the meantime, we're also looking to hire um, and interim project manager. It's kind of the belt and suspenders approach. You know, the project is ramping up very quickly in this phase of the work. So we wanna make sure that it's well-staffed and there's a smooth transition. So we're looking to hire um, some additional help uh, in the interim. So um, I wanted to let you know that. And then I'm gonna launch into what we've been doing um, since we last met, which was a long time ago. It was before Christmas. It was before our last natural disaster. So uh, <laughs> we uh, did get the project uh, approved by our Board of County Commissioners formally and finally in um, January, January 14th. And so the absolute final master plan is on the, our website. <clears throat> And uh, the appendix, which is quite detailed, has more than you ever want to know about. But if you're looking for something you thought you remembered in a past meeting or something, meeting notes or all of that is, is on the web on our website. Uh, we've also been working on um, some land use work for the Concord project, so that doesn't um, affect you so much, but we have wanted to get that um, land use process going. So we're doing that. Um, and let's see, the main thing that we've been doing is working on the OPSIS scope of work. So the first master plan phase, we uh, hired OPSIS for um, the master plan work, knowing that we wanted to keep them throughout the whole project, but that um, we would, we didn't have a we didn't know exactly what we were building yet. So we didn't do a, a contract for the whole project. So we're doing a scope of work now, but working really closely with Liz and with Jim and with other staff on the, on the county side to, to, to figure out what we're gonna do for the next year and a half um, to get through to permitting um, and bidding of the project. So. It'll go from schematic design, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a minute, uh, all the way through uh, pit permitting and bidding, which will be about next May um, of 2022. So a little bit more than a year. Um, and we are almost done with that work. We're just wrapping up some pieces. That's why we're coming to you today. And we're looking forward to taking that to the board a little bit later um, in March. So what else has been going on? I have been working on a total project cost budget. Uh, we'll talk about that today, but I finally had some time to dive deep into the budget and work out all the parts and pieces on that. And I'll 
talk about that um, in a minute. So with that, I'm gonna jump into um, a few slides that we put together for you. And the first thing that we wanna talk about is um, the overall scope of work um, of the project um, from here into the end. So let me get organized with my screen here. It always takes me a little bit. You can talk amongst yourselves. <clears throat> it's hard when you can't hear anybody, so. <laughs> okay. How's that? Good. Uh, not that. if you can all see that. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. here we go. <clears throat> so we're gonna talk about, um, with, we don't have a lot of slides, but just a few. We're gonna talk about the schematic design through permitting, as I mentioned, and the various phases of work between here and there. Jim is gonna dive in a little deeper on schematic design uh, with Liz. And uh, we're also gonna talk about public involvement in the next phases, um, some task force subcommittees that I think you're gonna be excited about. And um, then we're gonna talk about the budget and then the near term schedule. So I don't know if this looks a little bit familiar to you. I really wish that we had uh, your notebooks and I'd give you this in 11 by 17. I'm gonna blow it up in a minute for you, those of you that are, um, it's too small for you. Um, <clears throat> but this is, uh, I remember we did the first one like this. Oh my gosh, it was probably almost two years ago where we were, we were scoping out the whole project. Um, and so now what we've done is we've redone it um, with what's ahead and some new, more detailed phases of work. So um, if you can see the master plan is complete, yay. Um, then we're gonna go into schematic design. Uh, that's the next phase of work. Design development and construction documents, which in this particular project is combined because it's a little bit smaller project and, and it's a nice efficient way to do the work. Then we'll go into permitting and bidding. And when we say bidding here, it isn't necessarily putting the project out to bid. Uh, it, we will probably be getting a contractor on earlier and we'll be doing a negotiated bid. We can talk a lot more about that as the project goes on, but this is where they'll do their sub bids and give a final price on the project. <clears throat> and then we'll go into construction, which we think will be about 12 months beginning next spring uh, to winter. So those are the, the major phases. Um, I'm gonna blow it up just a little bit here so you can see it a little bit better. The um, schematic design is two months, so it's really uh, pretty fast and it's gonna be really fun. I think this is one of the most fun phases of a project. And then the design development is about five months. Uh, permitting and bidding is four months. And then we think, as I mentioned, construction is about 12 months. So um, I'm gonna, I wanted to send these to you, but what I'm gonna do is the next time we have an opportunity to, where we need to send you something, I'll make sure I put this in the packet and get it to you. Um, so now I blew this up a little bit more. Hopefully you can see it. And this is for Jim and Liz to talk about uh, the pending phases. Great. Thanks, Catherine. Um, so yes, this is uh, really exciting to move into schematic design. As Catherine said, that's probably the most formative uh, phase of designing a project, as well as actually design development, where we'll get more into materials. But looking at uh, what we're going to be doing during schematic design, um, the first step is to take all the great comments that we received from you at the end of the master plan phase. There are a number of kind of outstanding questions and issues uh, that needed to be addressed. And so that's going to uh, inform some uh, refinements to the concept design plan. So uh, that's something we'll be starting up on real soon. And at our first meeting with you, uh, we'll be sharing what uh, some of the suggested changes are to address uh, the concerns that you brought up. And then uh, another key one is really building character. And 
you know, even during the master plan phase, we spent quite a bit of time talking about that and what really has the small town feel, what, what are the materials and the quality of uh, the building that feels like it belongs in Gladstone. Um, and so we'll uh, really be diving into that, uh, starting even with the first meeting with you, we'll want to uh, start to uh, develop that dialogue. And uh, that'll be something that hopefully uh, starts to uh, uh, feel evolved and, and more resolved by the end of schematic design. Um, you know, sustainable design is a really key element uh, we've talked about even during the master plan phase, but now we're going to dive into it much deeper in terms of mechanical systems and, you know, opportunities for PVs on the roof and solar shading and how we design that solar shading so it, it's effective, but also has a character that is appropriate uh, to Gladstone. And then another really uh, fun thing we're going to be doing is talk about opportunities for art in history. At this point, really, uh, during schematic design, uh, with the full committee, uh, looking at where, where are opportunities for art? Is it on the outside of the building? Is it, uh, you know, in the courtyard? Uh, is there opportunities for gallery space or painting inside the building? These are all opportunities that we, uh, we want to, with you as a group, talk about where those potentials might be. Um, you know, obviously there's more technical things of uh, verifying the code requirements and, you know, obviously the structure, all this starts to impact and inform developing a cost estimate. Uh, we have an independent cost estimator we worked with previously. They're going to do the schematic design estimate, but during this phase of work, uh, we'll be hiring, or not us, but the uh, County and, and Parks and Rec will be hiring a contractor who will be a partner with us and with you uh, from the really starting in design development all the way through the construction of the project. And having them on board early is really great uh, because uh, they will offer cost information, cost savings measures. And it's really uh, that kind of balancing act between uh, hitting the goals and aspirations for the design, but making sure that we're also keeping an eye on the budget. Um, also, uh, as we talk about opportunities for art in the, in the building, in the environment around it, uh, concurrent with that will be hiring a art selection coordinator. Um, so we want to make sure that this is a process that is uh, fair and, and also uh, includes members of uh, this task force as well as uh, artists from representative artists, uh, members from the library as well as uh, uh, the county. And, and Liz is gonna talk a little bit more about this, but that, that'll be a, an exciting part of this process. And then we'll also be forming uh, a subcommittee representatives mm -hmm as I was mentioning, perhaps a couple people from uh, this group for an arts subcommittee, as well as a sustainability group that'll be involved with a, a design charrette. And of course, there's lots of public and community engagement. And Liz is gonna talk about that in a moment. I'll just jump over to the uh, design development phase. Um, the key thing at the end of schematics is we do have an alignment with our budget before we really uh, go forward into design development. Once we have a, a roadmap there and uh, there may be items and finishes that we can carry as add alternates. Uh, those are elements that are perhaps outside a base scope of work, but we wanna price them out and design for them. And hopefully when all the costs come in, we get everything you want but uh, we need to be very proactive about how we think about the budget. So in design development, basically the drawings get bigger, uh, they get more detailed. Uh, a key thing is really diving into materials and finishes. You'll start to see physical examples, uh, both exterior and interior materials. 
uh, even talking about what some of the furniture might be uh, and how the materials and fabrics of that tie into an overall cohesive design and experience. Um, you know, refinement of building systems. We will have uh, artists selected on board, which is really exciting to have their participation. Um, design review will happen with the city of Gladstone. You know, we, we're at a point where we start to move forward with even uh, working towards a permit. And uh, what it says with two cost estimates is we're going, because the contractor will be on board by then, they're going to develop a cost estimate. And then our independent cost estimator will also develop an estimate. So, so usually they're pretty close, but there's also what we call a reconciliation period where you, they come to grips with, well, what, what gives to create the, uh, the most optimal and the most accurate estimate. So uh, that's, a, that's a really important part of the project. And the, having a contractor on board means they'll be talking to their mechanical consultants and the people who uh, supply exterior building materials. They'll be working with us on constructability. So it's a, we're really excited about working with contractors. Uh, the majority of our work is done that way. And we think it uh, creates a better project for everyone. Um, I'm gonna let Liz, now maybe we can go to the next slide. And she's gonna talk more about uh, the aspects of community engagement, both for schematic design, as well as design development. But maybe, you know, uh, if there are questions at the moment, uh, I'm not sure, Catherine, if we just want to move forward, you're muted. <laughs> Catherine. Can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, we'll do a Q&A at the end of this At the section. end, okay, great. All right, thank you. Okay, so I'm just gonna expand a little bit on what Jim started talking about in terms of um, the ways that we're trying to extend the engagement work that you all started during the master planning phase. Uh, so we're looking at approaching this from two methods, one being um, public meetings, and then the other one being the formation of these two uh, task force subcommittees that Jim mentioned. Um, in terms of the public meetings, we're currently looking at a schedule where we would have two major public events during the course of design. One would be um, after schematic design. So as the, the design starts to get a little bit more resolved, and then the second one would be um, after somewhere in the middle of this design development construction documents phase since they're combined, um, but we'd be able to uh, then kind of talk about the feedback we got from the first outreach meeting and how we have responded to it and what changes that's done in the design. Um, additionally, we're looking at um, kind of pending how COVID plays into this whole scenario, right? Looking at how we can reach back out to the underrepresented groups so right now we're looking at what we're calling focus groups, which would have um, the same kind of meeting schedule, two check-in meetings throughout the, the course of design, one after schematic design and one kind of midway through this design development um, construction document phase. Uh, and then of course we have task force meetings scheduled throughout uh, the course of design. So we're, we're looking at, um, we've been looking at how to divide that up uh, kind of at the important points that we wanna make sure we touch base with you all. Um, and so right now we've got five meetings scheduled for that. Um, and then of course, we'll also have focus groups with end users and things like that as well in terms of these meetings. Um, for the two subcommittees, uh, one would be targeting sustainability and one would be targeting art. Um, for sustainability, we're looking at approaching that with one kind of, the commitment would be one meeting or charrette and then a report back to the task force. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about how that charrette is going to inform um, the sustainable design approach throughout the whole project. Uh, we're proposing working with a partner called Energy Trust of Oregon. I don't know if, if you all have heard of them. Um, mm -hmm. It's ETO. It's the uh, nonprofit that helps um, both commercial and uh, residential customers uh, with just save on energy usage. And so they do this through a series of programs and incentives. And so we would essentially um, enroll in a program with them and 
utilize the incentives that they offer for design and then also potentially they have um, incentives for installed equipment. And so they'll uh, help us facilitate the charrette and that'll help us kind of um, organize our priorities for sustainability um, and understand what the incentives are moving forward. Um, and part of this work Jim also mentioned um, the uh, looking at PVs and that's part of our one and a half percent green energy technology requirement that basically all of the public buildings are required to have one and a half percent of their budget dedicated to uh, some sort of green energy technology. And in this case, we're looking at uh, solar panels. Um, Can I ask you a real quick question? I, I'm not familiar with the term charrette. Oh yeah, thanks. That's a, that's a good question. It's okay. just basically, um, a meeting that is a collaborative meeting where we have kind of all of the users at the table. We're throwing out different ideas, making sure that we walk away from that meeting where everyone has the same kind of design idea and the same path forward. So it's just kind of a fancy meeting, a word for a workshop, I guess. So that's kind of our sustainability task force. And I'll talk a little bit in a minute about who we're thinking would be part of that um, sorry, the sustainability subcommittee, who we think would be part of that. Um, and then our, uh, Jim touched on this, so I'll, I'll only mention it quickly, but basically the goal would be to not only look at ways to integrate art, but how to integrate some of the history of Gladstone into the, how we express that art. 1% um, of the project budget is gonna be dedicated to this. Uh, there's a potential to coordinate this work with um, the work the Library Foundation is doing we are planning on reaching out to find a public art facilitator that knows how to guide us through this process because it's kind of complicated. And um, we wanna work with the group to identify locations in the building, whether it's attached to the building, whether they're standalone objects, whether it's multiple, and there's a lot of opportunity. Um, and then throughout the course of design, we'll check in with this sub subcommittee in terms of the art progress, the development of the concept, the refinement, and then continue reporting back to the task force. So as we started planning this out, we're looking at about five or six meetings for that subcommittee. I think we're ready for the next slide. So these two subcommittees um, would report back to the task force. Um, the sustainability we're thinking would be comprised of two task force members then people from the project management team, some representatives there, some representatives from OPSIS, our team of engineers. Uh, for this charrette, we're gonna wanna make sure our mechanical, electrical, um, plumbing, probably our landscape architect even look at you know, how we're handling water throughout the site and sustainable site design. Um, and then the sustainability supervisor from Clackamas County, and that'll be facilitated by an ETO or energy trust representative. Um, and then for the art and history subcommittee, once again, trying to keep two task force members, um, some project management representatives, OPSIS, the art facilitator, and then we're thinking potentially an at-large community artist that could add an outside perspective and a little bit of expertise. Um, and this is just kind of our first pass on a good representation or cross-section of the project team we think could be included in these subcommittees. It's not set in stone. So let's take a little break there. So um, I've got a feeling you might have some questions. I know there's been a lot of interest in art previously. So um, any questions about that for any of the team? I just wanted to, um, we had discussed at our little preliminary meeting that maybe two task force members was a small number and that possibly, you know, it could be maybe four task force members for the art and history, if we had that desire. Christy, did you have a question? Nope, I was just turning on the light. <laughs> oh, okay. I know it's getting dark in here, isn't it? <laughs> when, when are you gonna be looking to fill those committee positions so that that can, um, process can start. Yeah, so I think the, the first one that needs to get filled is uh, the sustainability, the ones for the sustainability subcommittee. 
because that one's sort of hot out of the gates with schematic design. And then the art committee would be, um, we can do it during schematic design, but it wouldn't need to be up and running until after schematic design, because that's when Jim and Liz during schematic design are gonna look at opportunities with you. Um, and then we'll dive into the actual committee work in design development. Did I get that right, Jim, Liz? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Natalie, did you have a question or you just, no? No, no question. I was just itching my ear. Yeah. So one question I have for you is, um, one of the things that Liz mentioned is coordinating with the foundation. You know, we don't know how the found, we haven't talked about this before, so um, it's, it's a nice time to have the conversation about, um, I know you've talked about doing fundraising or, you know, you have some money and maybe, we don't know, for all you know, you, we know you want to, you know, buy books or, or something other that might be relative, uh, relevant or important for the, the library. Um, but this will also would be an opportunity if you were interested in art to flow through this task force and then um, have a discussion with um, sort of the, the task force at large and make have that process be in place for that work. There's Laddie, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Yes, I, the foundation would definitely be interested. We have some funds that we have been uh, saving for some time. And I think it would be a good idea to have a foundation member on the arts committee, if at all possible. And that could be either Bev or myself or Margaret. Um, but we definitely are interested and we are interested in doing some fundraising for whatever is necessary. But we have some money we would like to spend on the library. We do not want to spend it on books. We want to spend it on something that will be a part of the library. That's great. That's really exciting. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, I don't, so Liz um, mentioned that the, the budget that we've got set aside is a, it's 1% of the construction budget. It's kind of a um, typical number that others jurisdictions use. So, um, What's that number? Is it 32,000? I just... 37. 37,000. 37, so um, I think that could really uh, go towards something really wonderful in the building. Um, as a group, uh, you can discuss whether you want it to be integrated with the building, something like, you know, um, a, something like um, a very special door that might be carved or, you know, or it could be something for the courtyard, as Jim said. So um, you can, we'll be looking at opportunities through schematic design and then launch into uh, selection of the artist. Beverly. Uh, one of the things that the foundation that we've talked about is the opportunity in the building to have space for a revolving art pieces to be hung of, from local artists. And I, w I think we would all like to see that, um, not so much pieces that we purchase, but that pieces that local artists could display and be for sale and it would be a rotating um, display. Yeah, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that because um, I did talk to the Clackamas County Arts Alliance and they have a program where they do that specifically. Um, okay. they, I don't know how often they change them out, maybe every one or two months, or maybe more, I'm not sure. And if you, if you are involved in their program, they will, um, they will work with you to put, put, you, put you on their rotation. So it's kind of fun. Um, we, the building that I work in, or you know, used to work in before COVID, <laughs> <laughs> um, they were on the rotation and it was really fun um, and interesting work and it's all local artists. Good. So that's a possibility that, too. Yeah, that was definitely something that we we talked about in the foundation and would like to see. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think it will help. It will be another way to involve the community. That's yeah, that's great. great. And so, yeah, so Jim, you can be looking, you know, thinking about where that might be. Yeah, I mean, it, it's those types of uh, 
criteria are really important to bring up at this phase because now we want to start thinking about, well, where's that wall space? Is it in the right position where it really feels like a gallery wall? You know, so it, it, uh, that's something that'll be at the forefront of our thinking. So thank you. Well, yeah, that's why I wanted to bring it up at this point because exactly. it's work if, if we get past the design and there's no space. Right, yeah, you got to plan for that. So that's good. Right. Any other questions? I know Nancy, you've been interested in art in the past. Is, is it something you're still interested in? Yes, which Nancy? Nancy Ike said, I was, I was looking at you, can't you tell? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm still interested in that. I, I also think we need to always keep in mind diversity when we're doing this, because if you even just look at our group, we're a bunch of, you know, over 60 white women. And I would like to, to make sure that Gladstone's public buildings reflect some of the history and the diversity of the region mm -hmm. when, when we're thinking through those processes for art or for whatever. Um, Absolutely. We do have a Native American city council member now who could probably sh shed some light on, you know, what that looks like from her perspective. So whoever's on that committee, I hope I hope it's broader than, you know, what we see here. That's an excellent idea, Nancy. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, good comment. All right, any other questions before we move on to um, talking about the budget, which isn't nearly as exciting? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna uh, share my screen again. Oops, where to go? And it's doing something funny. There we go. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I mentioned earlier that I've been working a lot on the project cost, and. Um, Remember way back in May, I looked it up today, <laughs> uh, Jennifer went through these two different um, definitions for total project cost uh, with us. And so I just wanted to remind us of these two um, categories that make up a total project cost. It doesn't mean, um, you know, everybody uses these all the time, but um, this is kind of a, a basic, these are, this is basic terminology and a way to organize a budget. So the first one are direct project costs, um, the expenses that are directly related to the construction. And the way I like to think about this uh, um, specifically for this project is that um, this will be the contractor's um, contract. So just think of everything a contractor does in general, and it usually would fall under the direct project costs. So, you know, their materials, labor, um, they'll do the demolition, earthwork, they'll do um, any of the landscaping, you know, the building, of course, and then, you know, we'll be do building new sidewalks as well. So anything having to relate to the, probably a curb and gutter and a sidewalk, um, that's a direct project expense. And then on the indirect side, and sometimes people don't realize that this is a separate, it's especially in a public uh, project, that these things would be done um, probably through uh, a different contract or a different, um, it's just sort of different group of a different bucket of money than the contractors um, and not in the contractor's responsibility necessarily. So for example, we did a survey on the uh, Gladstone site to make sure we understood all of the grades around there and the topography. Um, we also did some environmental work. I remember we talked about that a little bit. Uh, we need to do asbestos abatement inside. We need to remove a big oil tank. Um, also in this um, category of work are the architectural and engineering fees. Uh, all the permits of which there are many <laughs> and uh, testing um, all the community engagement uh, would be included in this cost. Um, project staff like me and um, also a, a construction manager. Um, so I just wanted to give you that brief overview to remind you. 
so that when we go to this one, you'll remember um, this is where we were when we left off with the master plan. So we had a total project cost of 4.9 million. Uh, you guys probably remember that. We had a direct cost of 3.8 and an indirect cost of 1.1 million. And the way we came up with this is the direct cost was a cost estimate, estimate done by a subconsultant to OPSIS. So it's a real person in a real office who um, works through the costs uh, with, the, um, with Jim and now with Liz, with Jennifer before, <clears throat> and they came up with the number of uh, 3.781. Now the indirect cost, because we were in such a preliminary phase of work, we were in the master plan, we said, okay, what do we think the indirect costs will be? And so we just put a lump sum on there, uh, a placeholder of 30% of the direct costs. So you can see on the chart here, we've got the blue is total project cost. We've got direct uh, or um, direct costs and then, um, and then the indirect costs, the gray are, uh, that was the 30% number. So, and that's an industry standard for many projects. So um, after that, we felt like the next thing we needed to do was really dive into these indirect costs and make sure we understood what was included in all of that and, and make see where we stood, um, oops where we stood on the project. So the short story is the indirect costs went up by quite a bit when we dove in. Um, so we now have a new project cost of 6 million with the direct at about 3.5 and the indirect um, at 2.5. Um, and so this, it's a big number, a uh, big uh, increase. It's going went from 30% to 69%. So again, this new estimate, um, you can see the direct cost um, didn't change a lot. And I'll put these side by side in a minute so you can see them. Um, and the indirect costs did go up. So in this case, on the indirect costs, on this gray bar here, what I did was really dove in. And also, um, thanks to OPSIS too, they um, helped put this work to put this um, budget together because it's a fair amount of legwork just to you know figure out various costs and rules of thumb um, on all these indirect costs. So um, what I did was um, went into and made a very detailed estimate. It includes uh, five categories of work and fair, 40 very unique costs. So essentially it's a, an Excel spreadsheet. And um, so then side by side, you can see that the direct cost, the orange, really didn't change very much. Um, this is not a significant amount for a project in this phase of work. But you can see that the jump here on the gray, um, and this is not my favorite thing to talk about, but this did increase quite a bit. So, um, and this is part of when you're, uh, how do I put this? So when you're, you know, we're basically birthing a project. And so the master plan was the first phase of like wrapping our arms around what we thought the project would cost. And then, you know, the more and more we learn about it, the more, um, more detail we can add to it. And so it, these projects, these costs will change over time. But I do think that once, you know, it's like peeling an onion, but you keep learning more and more and more. Um, so we feel confident that we've, we've got some good numbers now, but that's not to say that they may not change. <clears throat> so these are the buckets. Um, so I lied, I have four buckets, not five buckets. Um, so you say, why the change? <clears throat> so like I said, the, there was a lump sum for the indirect cost. Um, uh, versus a detailed verified um, to the extent possible numbers. Um, and these are the four categories that I was talking about. So the first one is everything that, and these are indirect costs, remember, this is totally outside of the total, the, um, the direct costs, which the contractor is going to be responsible for. 
so it's everything that's building related. So, um, so in that one, I have the furniture, uh, Opsis, this is another thing that they've done, been doing in the last couple of months is they put together a really detailed estimate uh, for furniture on the project. I know that there's been questions in the past about, you know, making sure that there's furniture and you're not opening the doors to an empty building. So um, I want to assure you that we've got uh, uh, a good number for furniture and for equipment and signage, security system, things like that. And then the professional services uh, bucket is uh, architectural and engineering fees, uh, public involvement. Um, as much as we love doing it, it does uh, is a significant cost. Um, building permit I mentioned, system development charges. Those are charges you get, um, you pay when you um, you when you get a permit based on. Um, some any impacts you might have to a particular entity like parks. I know that we'll be paying some SDC for parks and for stormwater and things like that. And then also we put in art and an artist because we felt that that was really important for the project. It's also one of your values. Um, and then any um, testing that we have to do like testing concrete, things like that. So then there's a bucket of project support. So that's me. Um, and then the new person that will be taking my place, um, a PM assist, or really a better word would be a, a, a project manager. Um, we're going to hire an interim project manager to help um, to make sure the project's well staffed during this phase of transition. And um, it's kind of the belt and suspenders approach. And then uh, we also uh, plan on hiring a contractor to, to help us with pre construction. And then that would also be the contractor that builds the building. So that way they become a part of the team early on. And then the actuals to date. So um, we have, a, we're keeping track of what we've spent so far um, on the master plan, on public involvement, public meetings, staff, mailers, and other sort of miscellaneous things. And I think the most important um, message that I can communicate to you is uh, the county is really committed to this project. Um, I speak with the leadership with Laura and Allegra all the time and um, and that's the message I get regularly. And the county and the Gladstone have um, an agreement to build a 6,000 square foot building and um, there is every intention to continue to do that. So I know that there are concerns when the project uh, budget has changed significantly. It's like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Um, is this going to kill the project? Do we have to make it um, change it in any way? And this is the what we're telling you here tonight is what we're taking to our commission in a couple of weeks. So we'll be telling them um, and proposing the recommendation with the budget as it is, as I've talked to you about tonight. And um, again, this is a really high priority uh, for, the pro for the county. So um, with that, I wanted to do just stop for a minute just to remind myself that I wanna see if there are other questions that you might have. Does that raise any, I can see Christy has her hand up. <laughs> so I can always count on Christy to have a question. Yeah, if you can, I can. Um, so in a conversation that I had today with my contractor, so we're finishing up re, a remodel here, um, like lumber prices and everything have like sky, have really gone up since this little pandemic thing. Um, so are we using today prices for this? Because I mean, they could go up even more depending on what goes down you know, goes on with the pandemic, it could come down, you know, I mean, like you said, I want to make sure that we have realistic numbers because I, I think it's going to be fluid for a while. You want to take that, Liz, or? Yeah, sure, and Jim can jump in too. Um, what we do with all of the cost estimates is we'll build in an escalation factor to the construction start date. So the team that did the estimate built in um, a, a padding factor, inflating um, the the um, the numbers to get to where we think they're going to be when we actually start construction. 
Um, well, because I know, I mean, nobody knows what's going on with the pandemic and how that's affecting things. It's, I mean, it's weird all the way around because new things, you know, we have fires, we have freezes, we, you know, I mean, so many variables since this has happened that I just want to make sure that we're dealing with as much as we can, um, the constant flux that's going on. Yeah, actually, uh, some of the cost estimators are saying, you know, if you can start construction within the next year, it's, uh, it's more predictable where the market is. Uh, I, your uh, contractor's accurate that, you know, there's commodity costs and then there's labor costs. And what's happened is the commodity costs in certain areas has gone up a bit, but the labor cost is, is uh, it's more competitive now. Uh, we're getting better numbers, but it, it kind of balances out. So the escalation factor, you know, is between two or 3%. I think we're using 3%. And, you know, it's, uh, whereas if this was uh, two years ago, it could have been seven or 8% a year, you know, and more. I, so we're in a place that it's much more predictable. Um, Ironically. But, yeah, I know, I know. But anyway, um, you know, you look out two years from now, well, who knows, you know, but I, so I think we're, we're in a pretty good spot um, to be able to do this project, you know, and, and to think about starting construction in a year. So I, I think we can feel pretty good about it. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Laura, did you want to say a couple things? Put you I'll just reiterate what Catherine said and just let you know that again, the county is very, very committed to this project. It's a very high priority for our department, business and community services, and for the Board of County Commissioners. I've already sent a note to them, letting them know about the cost increases. And so they are aware of it. And uh, again, we will be discussing this with them, I believe on March 9th. Um, but again, we, we are all very committed to this. It's a very high priority. So I just wanna keep saying that and let you know that um, we're committed. Thanks. Yeah, Lisa. I just had a suggestion um, in the spirit of transparency and being fiscally responsible that maybe it would be a good idea for us to receive a budget update every time we meet. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. We can talk about if there are changes or no changes or it's always good project management to do that. So that's a good idea. Yeah, I, um, in terms of, you know, where we sit with construction and maybe your question's broader than that, um, but we will have a cost estimate done at the end of schematic design. So that will be two months out. And then we will have another one at the end of design development, which is another three or four months. So um, there, there may be budgetary numbers to update on, but uh, it's, you know, it's not like we're, we have new cost information at every meeting, just to be clear. I'm not That's sure if that helps. Yeah. yeah. So maybe every time there are cost adjustments. Yes, you will. That would be, yeah. I think and, it would be good to be transparent with that. Yeah. And I think too, um, you know, we can, you know, prior to the contractor being on board, I mean, we've got a pretty good read of where we are with our budget. And if it's like, wow, if you add this material, you want to use, you know, laid on the outside of the building, well, that doesn't fit within our budget or, you know, it's just, we need, we need to be good stewards and advise you appropriately. So yes, that will be part of our role and we'll, we'll try to, uh, you know, do our best with that. But uh, we just wanna, you know, if we're staying in that realm where we think it's, uh, uh, alignment with our budget, that's that's our responsibility to you to let you know if we're going beyond that. Nancy, did you have something? 
Nancy. Yeah, maybe we talked about this, but I'm trying to remember if um, we were going for LEED certified at any level and how that impacts the budget. Jim, maybe. Good question. Um, <laughs> um, I'll start and then maybe yeah. you can add. Yeah, okay. So we did take a look at it, you know, um, obviously with the, hi, Lorreen. <laughs> um, so obviously with you know, these cost, the cost um, change, we were looking at everything about, you know, what we, is there a potential to, to cut costs? And so there is a significant cost impact to doing a uh, lead certification, uh, whether it's gold or silver, and um, I guess there's platinum. Um, and what we decided was, and also what's interesting about lead is, you know, I've been around a while, is that now some of those practices are just everyday, you know, it's, it's best practices for a project. So, um, so we talked about the pros and cons and decided that we're following this energy trust uh, path to net zero was a better option for us. And then also um, uh, OPSIS is already doing a number of things related to um, sustainability and many of the things that would be part of a certification. So um, you guys talk about that part. Yeah, but at, at this point, we aren't looking to certify right. the project. That's the key yeah. thing. But yes, I, you know, we as a firm are very committed to designing all of our projects to be exemplary models of sustainability. And I think even at the master plan, stage that's been at the forefront of our thinking, uh, looking at very sustainable mechanical systems still uh, providing, as, as Liz said, the, the PVs, uh, doing modeling to really study the daylighting and how effectively we're addressing that. Um, we always use healthy materials, uh, non-toxic non -toxic materials, keep our eye on, you know, real practical strategies that also have to do with lower maintenance. That's a key part of, of uh, sustainability and that it's uh, gonna be a project that really stands the test of time. And it's got good materials. Uh, exterior is one of the first places to look at for energy efficient design, having a exterior skin or envelope that is uh, energy efficient. And so um, all those things we'll be looking at. It will be a sustainable, highly sustainable building. Um, and we'll keep track of the metrics, but uh, we, you know, during uh, lead certification, the, the builder, the contractor is keeping track of all these various points. And that's something that will not be part of this project at the moment. I unfortunately have to leave, I, I apologize, uh, but Liz is here and Catherine, so great to see you all. I'm so excited to uh, move forward with you on this. Uh, nice it's a great you, project and you're a lot of fun to work with and we're really excited about uh, the months to come. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, Jim. Bye. Bye. Any other questions? I have one. Who is that? Where are you? Margaret. Margaret, <laughs> hi. <laughs> uh, most of the stuff that's been donated to the current library is furniture. And I, I'm assuming that some of that's gonna be moved because it's been donated by families. But there's three lights in the old library that was donated by a family that's part of that family is still in Gladstone. Is there a way to put those into the new building when they're designing it. There's the three different colored lampshades that are actually just above the teen room. Oh, okay. Um, I think that it's, it's worth taking a look at. I, I, um, Liz, what, what do you think? And I don't yeah. know who owns them. Do, you, do we know who owns them? I don't. No, I just know that they were, have been donated by a family and that I don't 
know the name of the family, but my understanding is that part of those, uh, part of that family actually still lives in the area. Oh, interesting. Mitzi, do you know anything about those? I would assume, um, I would assume that the city owns it. I'm pretty sure they're owned by the city or the library. Yeah. Um, well, it's something that we can take a look at. And, you know, we don't want the, to use them in, if it's not a, sort of they don't fit, you know. Um, sometimes you see that happen. Uh, but we can certainly take a look at it. Um, they're kind of these hanging lamps and they're, they're not very big, probably a mid-century look. Huh. Pretty small. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I, they're pretty small. I think small. it's definitely something worth cataloging, right? So that we know that they're theoretically available and that we want to find a place for them, whether it's in the project or somewhere else in the community that we don't want those to just disappear, right? Yeah. Good thought. You guys are an easy crowd tonight. <laughs> <laughs> You're just happy to be warm and home. And, and have light. And have light. It's right. a yes. very low bar. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can try any hard, you know, I'll try harder to be a little more rowdy. But yeah. <laughs> I know. It's hard on Zoom to be rowdy. Okay. So, what uh, I'm gonna, so oh, go ahead. Don't throw that down. Don't throw that gauntlet down to me. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's no more questions, I'm going to um, move on to next steps. So I'm just going to share my screen like I do. And move on to, uh, here we go. So as a reminder of where we're headed in the near term, um, we're going to go for a policy session on March 9th. Um, and that's an update on basically everything that we um, shared with you tonight. We will share with the um, commissioners. Uh, it will also include Concord, of course. And um, that policy session, um, is just an, it's for information for the commissioners. It's time for them to ask questions. So there's no public comment at that, um, that session. And then our goal is to go the next week on the 18th to get the OPSIS contract approved, which will be extremely exciting and a milestone. So we can dive into the um, task force meeting tentative date all goes well, April 7th will be the kickoff meeting for schematic design. So uh, we're looking forward to that. And then I just wanted to put a little asterisk here of things that we're gonna need to be thinking about in the future. Um, we're gonna do the subcommittee members, uh, fill out those two groups. Um, the first one as um, we talked about would be the sustainable, uh, the Sustainability Committee for especially for the Energy Trust of Oregon work session or now your new word of the day, charrette. And then um, also uh, the art committee can follow later. And what we'll do is either fit those in at the beginning of a meeting or you know, at the end of a meeting or something. It probably doesn't require a whole meeting. Um, and then we'll also need to vote for a chair and a vice chair. And um, the chair and vice chair, uh, as the two boards, the library boards are being um, combined now, we thought what it would be nice to do is wait until the, the library board is combined into one and see you know, who's, the, who, who's on the board and if there are members that want to join this group. Um, and then we would, um, do a new vote for chair and vice chair because um, uh, there you are, Lisa and Loreen, um, their terms are up. They may want to re-up, however, but um, their terms are up. And um, so we'll do that housekeeping in the short, shortly. We don't have a specific date yet. Is 
So are you ready what? for public comment? Yeah. So um, Amber, I don't see a lot of people in the audience, but. Yeah, um, it looks like we just have a couple people calling in, but we'll go ahead and open public comment now. So if you have something you'd like to say, please use, please use the raise hand feature. Um, I don't think anyone's calling in on the phone, but if you are, that would be dialing star nine. And I don't see any hands going up, so I think public comment is closed. Thanks, Amber. You're looking nice tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Got a little Photoshop going on. <laughs> we all could use a little Photoshop. <laughs> So did anybody else have any general questions that you wanted to ask? We have, um, we're a little bit early before we adjourn. If there's anything that was discussed tonight that maybe you've been thinking about. Nancy Eichstadt. I, I don't have a question, but I learned something recently that I nearly lost my mind over it. The Hillsborough Stadium, I don't know if you guys have noticed that building out by Highway 26, usually the big lights are on all mm -hmm. the time. Right. They're powering the building with their water usage. So they put a turbine in the ground and there's so much pressure coming from the city water tank or wherever the water comes from that they run it through the turbine. And then the turbine generates enough power for those lights for the entire building. And wow. it, just, it just blew my mind. I, I love the idea of the fact that you flush the toilet and you're powering <laughs> the building. So, <laughs> I, this isn't a big enough project for the library, but I like thinking out of the box like yeah. that. <clears throat> Nancy might want to even be on the sustainability committee. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> <laughs> Anybody uh, else that has a comment or a question or Beverly? Just a, my usual comment. Uh, there's no way to build a fire under this and move it forward a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> you, you knew I was going to have to ask. I always ask. That's my favorite question. Um, those of us who have been looking forward to this new library for so long um, want to still be around when it's done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, no, no, we're going to have a party, I tell you. Um, yeah, oh, the and, is so far away now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and one more question. Uh, I have expressed an interest, and I think there are other people that feel the same way, that we get to have a chance to take a whack at the old building before <laughs> it's knocked down. Um, yeah, so uh, on that big chart that I showed, the 11 by 7, well, the one I, I was talking about all the different phases, there's definitely a groundbreaking in there. Um, so that might be an opportunity to do it. And the other thing is if we get a contractor on board uh, earlier, they may say, hey, let's just do, um, you know, demolition during permitting or, you know, we could, it's hard to say right now, but um, so it could be its own little party. Okay. Anyway, you, you knew that I was going to have to ask about <laughs> moving things ahead faster because yeah. it's been my constant theme. Yeah. You could yeah. Do a fundraiser by letting people take a whack at the building. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Good plan. A cool 10,000 for a whack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I don't understand the animosity toward a building that has served you well for many, many years. <laughs> It's just, I want to see the new building so badly. And I just, uh, yeah. <laughs> Any other comments or questions before we adjourn? Catherine, I was going to ask if you could email us maybe the schematic of the timeline. Sure, absolutely. And I'll put it on the web as well. Yeah. All right, well, it was really good to see all of you and I'm so glad that no one got injured in this crazy storm we had.
that's the most important part. It was a drag to not have heat <laughs> and power. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we survived that and COVID, yeah. we'll be able to do anything. Between surviving COVID and, and uh, the power outage and everything, yes, we're a tough group. <laughs> How many vaccines? I've had the first vaccine. I've had the first one too. First All one. All right. I get my second one March 2nd. Oh, lucky. And get scheduled. Huh? You, you can't, can't get, get It's really oh, hard. No. It's really the hard. Sched the scheduling fiascos. Yeah. Gonna yeah get it's, worse. Really, it's really difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had a daughter that uh, got me scheduled, and then she's been helped. Helping other she, members. Her, da her daughter family. helped me. <laughs> yes, and MoMA, and now Mary Elise, and, and she's been sending out. I think you've seen the emails too, haven't you, Margaret? Uh -uh. Maybe not. Oh, I'll, I'll forward it to you. Oh. Mar With Margaret, go to Walgreens. I was able they, to get my, my uh, sister-in-law one yesterday. I tried to get on to Walgreens, and they didn't have anything. I right, keep trying. Just, just keep put trying. in different at different uh, zip codes. You have to keep putting in a different zip code. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there's a trick to it. Yeah. They, definitely they, they've made it answers. way more difficult than it needed to be. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, everyone, we will see you next time. Take care. Hopefully, there won't be anything between now and then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see you later. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody.